who was on the phone. Huh? Okay, thank you. Well, I'm glad to be on the line tonight. Good evening, everyone on the phone line and the Zoom line as we come to our expectation moment tonight. I'm glad to be back. I thank God not only for your patience with me, but I thank God for each of the teachers who has taught in my absence. I'm grateful to be on, on back at expectation tonight. Uh, thank you, Mother Vaughn. I think you're probably on the phone line for uh, making sure that you did your part while I was away, and I'm just grateful to be on here tonight. We're going to open it up tonight with prayer, and then we're going to proceed uh, immediately uh, to our lesson tonight and just get you ready. If you turn to the 103rd Psalm, that's what we'll be studying from tonight. But let us open in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, your people have gathered in this very sacred moment. Be sacred, Lord, because you have given us an instruction and order uh, to come together every night at this time, Lord, to study your word. And to study your word in such a way that it builds up our understanding of your word, but builds up our ability to live in expectation of your great blessings and your great power. God, I pray that you'd empty this preacher out now. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. And I pray, God, that you'd open up the hearts and the minds, Lord, of those who are gathered uh, tonight on the phone line and the Zoom line, that as we hear your word, it may enrich us, it may strengthen us, it may strip us, it may rebuke us, it may reprove us, but it, they may, it may exhort us. We love you and we thank you, God, for all of your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, tonight we're going to touch on the book of Psalm, one, one of the 103rd Psalm. And I tell you, it's quite a few verses in the 103rd Psalm, so I might not finish this I know I'm not going to finish it tonight. It may take me a couple of days, but I do think this is a rich psalm um, that gives us not only instruction, but gives us understanding, honestly, as to what God's will is uh, for us. Um, the other day, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and we had a, was having a conversation about uh, how much each of us had to pay for our insurance. Uh, I mean, our, our, our prescriptions. And so one of the things he was telling me was how much he had to pay, and it turned out he was paying uh, quite a bit more than I was. And he says, well, what kind of insurance you got? And I told him, and he said, well, you got good benefits. And I thought about the, the, the concept of benefits. Benefits is something that we get uh, as a result of our connection, our membership. So I have uh, Anthem, and Anthem as a result of the city. And, now, and, and, and as a result of that insurance and insurance, I have a church united. We have, we have benefits that cover certain things. It covers certain things uh, in our lives. It covers um, you know, benefits mean I have a good deductible for, for, for doctor's visits. It means that I have less insurance, less prescription costs. It means that, you know, at the end of the year, I can get my dental benefits out of the way by going to the dentist back to back to back. Whatever it is, we have benefits as a result of a particular insurance. But I want us to know tonight as we read this 103rd Psalm that as a result of being in the body of Christ and as a result of being saved, as a result of having the membership of the family of God, as a result of being a child of God, a son or daughter of God, as a result of being, um, having come to God through Jesus Christ, our Savior, something we didn't pay for, but what is paid for for us by the blood, of, by the blood of Jesus. I want us to uh, look at this verse. I'm just going to probably touch on about three verses tonight, um, maybe a couple more, but I want us to look at these three verses tonight and let us rejoice in the benefits we have in Jesus. Somebody say, I got benefits. Somebody say, I got benefits. I'm in Christ and I have benefits. Look at the chapter on the 103rd Psalm. Um, bless the Lord. The first thing, and we talked about this a couple of years ago. David, and, and every time I read it, it becomes a little more clear to me. David said, bless the Lord. He was doing, he was encouraging himself, but simultaneously he was encouraging and beseeching others to join him in praising the Lord. He was, he wanted everyone to move from a place of complacency. And if I can be honest with you, from a place of complaining, and I, we're going to come back to that later, instead to a place of blessing. One of the things that I think that each of us as children of God, and I got to say this to a lot of pastors, St. Peter, let us have more praise and more blessing of God than we do complaining about what we do or don't, what we don't have, or complaining about what problems we may face. David said, bless the Lord. Now, somebody might say, well, how do we bless the Lord? What, what, what? David is not saying is we can give something to God that's going to enrich his life. What David is saying is that, that as Christians, when we share with God our gratefulness, our thanksgiving for what he has done and what he is doing for us, it is a blessing to God. So imagine imagine you give somebody a great gift and they come and hug you and say, thank you so much for this gift. That God feels that love for us when we just tell him thank you, when we are grateful people, when we are gracious people, when we are thankful for all that he has done. And that's what David is saying. I just want the Lord to know how appreciative I am for all that I have. 
I'm coming back to this this again, but he says, bless the Lord. Then he says this, bless the Lord. Uh, he adds to it, oh, my soul. David is going to move beyond the mindset of praise to the heart set of praise. So it's one thing to sit and write down a list of things that God has done for you. Say, thank you, Lord, for these things. But David said, I want my heart. Because it's almost as if David is saying, I don't think my heart gets it. I don't think that my heart has a full understanding of all that God has done and is doing and will do for me. And so David wants some more of a comprehensive praise package, a more comprehensive blessing package. He wants his soul to get engaged. He wants his heart to feel, to tug, to be aware of all that God has done. D David doesn't want just intellectual praise, but he wants some heartfelt soul praise. How many of us have ever listened to soul music? And don't raise your hand. But how many of us have ever listened to soul music? And it kind of makes you move. It's, it, and, and that's why they call it soul music whenever it started. David wants us to have a, a, a praise and worship of God that gets our hearts moving, gets our hearts lifted toward God, that in that moment that we're not worried about who's around us, we're not worried about who's in front of us, we're not worried about the song and what key is singing, we're not worried about who's behind us, we might be blocking, but our soul is so engaged in giving God the honor and the praise that we lose ourselves in that moment. We should lose ourselves in that moment and by ourselves, but the truth is we should lose ourselves that same way in church and with Sunday and Wednesday. We really shouldn't have to be um, 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 pushed to praise. We should have a heart and a mind that's already ready to praise because our hearts and minds understand fully uh, and are engaged fully in what God has done. When you praise God with your mind, it's intellectual. When you praise God with your heart, it's spiritual. And think about our spirits that they can continue to pour out and share uh, and with, our, with our head what God has done and what God is doing in our lives. But let me look at this for verse one. David doesn't stop there. David says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And then he says, I need more and all that is within me. David says, I want this praise and this worship that I give to God to be all in compass, not just my mind, not just my heart, but I want my hands, my feet, all of me engaged in giving God praise. David says, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, sometimes we can be real jaded um, because of our complaining. Let me say this. So if you recognize yourself as a complainer, you should be aware because when you complain all the time, sometimes it it stunts your spiritual growth and it stunts your capacity to really give God praise. Uh, I was walking with a friend of mine the other day and we he heard his ankle for the first time in 1981. He heard again in 82. He heard again in 83. He heard again in 84. And, and over the years, when I walk with him, I can hear his ankle popping from about 40 years ago. And it always makes me laugh. And, and I asked him one day, I said, does it still hurt? He said, no, nah, man, it's kind of numb now. You know, it's just been, it's been, you know, it's been popping. It's been kind of scarred for so long. I don't really feel it. Some of us have allowed our complaints, our complaining to scar or to, or to um, cause us to, 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 to forget or to be numb to what God is doing. God brought us through yesterday. And when we're in today, we should be grateful that God is with us during the day. See, the thing about blessing the Lord, we don't have to wait till nighttime. We can bless the Lord all day long. There have been times I've been riding down the street and somebody swerved in my lane and I was able to maintain the lane. I had to praise God right there. I took my hand off the same wheel that I had to swerve or to hold my position on to tell God thank you because I realized that it was he that had protected me. That's what God wants us. And that's what David is saying. Lord, get in fully engaged in your worship. Sunday mornings, our hearts should be lifted. Our minds should be on the Lord. Our hands and our lips. We, that should be a little dancing. That should be a little waving of hands. That should be a little movement. So our whole body, all that is within us. See, when your whole inside gets to praise, it's going to manifest on the outside. Reverend Stanley sang that song. Something on the inside is working on the outside. Oh, what a change has come. God wants us to be fully engaged in praise. That's what David wants us. And David's inviting us. Yes, he's inviting Israel, but he's inviting St. Peter in 2024 to join him, not only with our minds, but with our souls and everything that was in us. He wants us to bless God's holy name. Therein is the focus of our blessing. Our focus is not just to, to bless God in a, in a mundane sense. Thank you, Lord. But it's to bless the holiness of his name. See, if God wasn't holy, we wouldn't be able to be saved from our sin. If God wasn't holy, we wouldn't be able to be delivered from the certainty of death. God is holy, so we should bless his holy name. We should honor God's name in the 103rd Psalm. We should lift up the name of the Lord. That should be a part of our process, to tell God thank you for his holiness and honor his name, which is holy. Now, he continues in verse 2, and it seems like, well, why does he keep repeating this? I heard this the other day. 
If you want somebody to learn something, you just keep repeating it. Just keep repeating it. David says, I can't get enough of this. He comes back in verse two and says, bless the Lord. Again, David is saying, I just can't, I can't. It's almost like David said, it's like fire shoving my bones and I can't hold my praise. Bless the Lord, he says, oh, my soul. He says, now, in the first verse, he wanted our blessings to God to be about the holiness of his name, his character, his nature. But in verse two, he wants us to bless the Lord in our, in, in, in our souls because of the practical application of what God does for us. Now, there are two separate things here, and I'm going to try to slow it down. Bless the Lord for his character, his nature. The Lord just gave me this. Bless the Lord for who he is, his nature. He's holy. He's righteous. He's, he's loving. He's kind. He's, 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 he's merciful. And he's, just, and he's pure. That's who God is. We bless him for that. But then in verse 2, he says, bless the Lord. And he says, and don't forget all his benefits. It's almost like David said, wait a minute. Don't forget all that God has done, all that God offers us, all that God gives us um, daily for our lives. David. Please tell me what my benefits package are. What tell me about my benefits package in Jesus? Let's look at verse three. And I wish um, somebody would write this down for me because the Lord gave this to me, and I ain't gonna have time to slow it down. In verse three, this is the first benefit that we have being children of God. Look what He says: "Who forgiveth all thine iniquities." God blesses us, and we should bless Him because of the fact that he forgives all of our sins. I remember Reverend Davis, and I, I never forget, we were going down to hear Reverend, to Reverend Gottfried's revival, this is probably 2004. You know, it was a matter of fact, it might've been November 2004, because I had been pastoring for about 15 minutes. And we were just having a conversation. And we were talking about relationship with God, but then we went on to talk about fellowship with God. Fellowship with God is the ability that we have to hear from God, to talk to God, to experience God's presence in all aspects of our lives. But the only thing that breaks fellowship in our lives is sin. Sin breaks our ability to hear from God, to feel God's presence, to experience his power, to experience these things. And so he said, you can never lose your relationship with the Lord. He's not going to ever, you know, you can't lose that. You can, you can, in matter of fact, some people have tried. They tried to walk with the Lord. The Lord didn't do nothing to bring him back. But our fellowship can be impacted by uh, unforgiven sins and even unconfessed sins. But what David is saying here is that God does, in fact, forgive us of all of our sins, all of our iniquities. We have to confess and ask for it. But guess what it says? God does do that. He forgives all of our sins. Before we can get joy, before we can get peace, before we can get a break, before we can get a blessing, before we can get our overflow, we have to have the barrier removed. And that barrier is sin. Remember when Adam and Eve went to the Garden of Eden? They just enjoyed God in the cool of the day. They just sat around and talked with God like on the porch. They just had a good time with God. And sin created the gulf between God and man. Jesus came back to close the, gap, the gulf, but the reality is unconfessed sin in our life still prevents us from experiencing God fully. That's why we should be grateful and praise God and bless his name because he does forgive all our iniquities. Thank you, Lord, that you are able to forgive us of all of our sins. That's number one. That's benefit number one. Benefit number two, he moves on to say, and, and, the, and God also healeth all thy diseases. Two things I know. God heals all diseases. He heals them in time, in this world, or he heals them in eternity. But God does, in fact, heal all of our, all of our, all, and heals all our diseases. I, I was having a conversation the other day. I guess I, so while I've been gone, I've been doing a lot of talking. So y'all need to know that I've been having conversations. And we were talking about the body's capacity to heal. So a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, as a matter of fact, he had a liver transplant. And we were, we were talking. And we were just talking about the concept of transplant. And he says, well, my liver, my donor, that's the person we got the liver from, um, gave his liver to three people. And I couldn't understand the math. I said, what do you mean? He didn't have but one liver, did he? He said, yeah, but the liver regenerates. So they, he said, they gave me a piece of his liver and they gave two other people a piece of liver. And he's, he's coming up on his anniversary in October as well. And his liver, that the little piece he got, has now developed into a full, a full liver. God regenerates us. If we, if we, Look at ourselves. When you get a cold, sometimes you don't take nothing. You just get delivered from it. And I can speak to the extreme situations. God heals how he wants to heal. God, many people have looked at death and God has brought them back. But the reality is, whether it's in life or death, God heals all our diseases. He is a healer. And so that's the second thing that we should bless God for. Whether you've been at the face, foot of face of death or you know that death is there, what we do know is when we leave this place, we are healed in our eternity. So 
as a child of God, we can praise God that he heals all our diseases. That's number two. If y'all give me a few more minutes, I'd like to get one or two more if I don't, if I don't mind. Number four, I'm sorry, verse four, number three on our benefits package for the Lord. It says, God redeemeth thy life from destruction. Every one of us in here probably could identify at least one moment in time when it could have went another way. It could have went another way physically, emotionally. It could have went another way, you know, practically. It could have been another one way enough financially because some, something that could have happened didn't happen. It's something that we almost missed. God caught it and brought it to our attention. Despite our weaknesses, beside our shortcomings, despite, here's the truth, despite some of our, our attempts to self-destruct, God has delivered us or, or it has redeemed us. Redeem means giving us back. God has given us back life despite the destruction that we, the destructive path we were on. That's what God does. So again, when we look at some of us can testify to this, some of us, our behavior, our actions, our, our um, irresponsibility, our immaturity could have caused us to be dead, sleeping in our graves. But God, but God redeemed our lives from destruction. We were headed toward the abyss. God turned us around, brought us back. Number three, that's the reason to bless the name of the Lord. All of us probably have one testimony where it could have been, but God. Let me do one more. I promise I'm going to let you go. He, he redeems our life from destruction. And look what he does. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. That concept of crowning, that's, that's something only God can do. In this world in which we live today, people seek to put crowns on folks' heads, especially at death. But I've come to understand this, that only God can crown us with those two eternal elements of, of life now and life into eternity. He says this, God crowns us. He, out of his the depths of his love, covers our head with his love and kindness. And let me just define it in a different way. That's God's mercy. Um, um, in the 24th Psalm, there's a surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all days of my life and I dwell in the house of God forever. What I want us to understand, that's in the Psalms uh, as well. What I'm trying to give us to understand is daily, when we wake up, God crowns our heads with his mercy and then furthermore, his tender mercies. Um, I, I imagine, so I don't have to do my, brush my hair in the morning as y'all can well see. But when I was younger, when I got ready to go somewhere, I had to, to brush my hair to get my, my hair ready for the day. Ladies, all of us got something different process. Well, why are we doing that? Why are we getting ready for our day? What God does is allow his love and kindness and his tender mercies to pour down upon us. That crown doesn't just sit there. It, it covers us and allows us to experience the fullness of God's love and kindness, his mercy, and then his tender mercies. His mercy as a package that shows us he be we belong to him, but his tender mercies are that which allows us to understand that he knows us and knows where we are. If you got children, or if you've been a child, each parent treated their children differently because they had tender mercies. That was specific to that child. One child might have been afraid of the dog. You put a nightlight in the room. One child might have got hot. You put you put a, a fan in their room. One child might have been cold. You put a blanket over them. That's tender mercy. And that's what God does for us every day. How about this? I'm looking at some face today. Mother Kylie, Sister Val, uh, Deacon Deaconess Lyons, Sister Roxanne, Deacon Deaconess Thomas, Sister Reese, Deacon Deaconess Edwards. Every day, guess what? God knows what we need. He knows what we stand in need of, and he knows what grants us confidence. And out of his tender mercies, God gives us everything we need. Thank you, Lord. And that's why, I'm gonna stop there tonight, but I got someone coming tomorrow. That's why, as children of God, we can bless the Lord. I don't care what you got going on. God is to be blessed. And we are to bless him with all of ourselves. We can, should never be shy about blessing God because God is not shy about blessing us. I'm gonna stop tonight at about 722. I thank God for each of you. And I look forward to those who I see tomorrow. Those I look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. But I love you, and I may God richly bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight, Lord, with a level of boldness to say thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We honor, honor you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. I pray, God, that you give us good memories as it relates to all of your benefits toward us. And let us be clear about your character, that you are a loving, holy, righteous God, a kind, merciful omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, sovereign God. And as we remember that, Lord, help us to lift up our hands and lift up our hearts, lift up our minds to you, O oh God, because you alone are worthy. We bless you with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with everything we have. Bless us, keep us, 
bless every household, bless every family, bless every individual that's on this line tonight. In the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hold on, Zoom line. God bless your phone line. <laughs>